Hello, everybody. Julian here. Thank you all so much for your feedback about the Rodecaster Pro 2. It is a super feature-packed product, and we have received tons of questions about how it works and its capabilities. Now, in this video, we're going to cover some of the most commonly asked questions. So let's get into it. Do I need to use a line booster like the Cloud Lifter or Fethead when recording with a dynamic microphone? The answer is no. The Revolution preamps give you enough gain to power even the most gain-hungry dynamic microphones. And they also have an incredibly low noise floor, which means if you use a FET head or a line booster, you're actually going to introduce quite a bit of noise to your signal. So we actually recommend don't use it with the Rodecaster Pro 2. Can you use the Rodecaster Pro 2 with a dual PC setup? And the answer is yes. So you have two completely independent USB interfaces with an extra virtual USB channel. This allows you to connect to two computers, mobile devices, or a combination of the two. Now, we've actually also had some people asking if you can connect a Mac and a Windows computer at the same time, and the answer is yes, you can. Can I route specific applications on my computer, for example, Game Audio, Discord, or Spotify, to different faders on the Rodecaster Pro 2? Yes, this is one of the reasons we added a second USB interface and the virtual USB interface. What this means is you can mix these independently without affecting the rest of your USB audio. What are the virtual channels and how do they work? The virtual faders are exactly the same as the faders on the mixer, only you have a digital slider controlled by the rotary encoder. This allowed us to make the Rodecaster Pro 2 even smaller than the original without sacrificing audio channels. In fact, the Rodecaster Pro 2 has more channels than the original, despite being quite a bit smaller. Why is there no TRRS inputs? Now, everything you could do with the TRRS inputs on the original Rodecaster Pro, you can actually do with the Rodecaster Pro 2 using the USB and the TRS inputs. For example, smartphones can be connected using the USB inputs, and the Rodecaster Pro 2 is even MFI certified for seamless connection to iOS devices. And then you've got outboard equipment like keyboards, DJ decks, and other line level devices. Now, these can actually be connected via the XLR TRS inputs on the back. You can actually have two of these stereo devices connected using these inputs. How are multi-track files saved? When recording a multi-track to a micro SD card or an external hard drive, the files will actually be saved as separate WAV files for each channel. So only the tracks that you're using will be saved as files. Now, this makes it so much quicker and easier to export your audio, especially if you're trying to do it for a full hour-long podcast. What's new about the Bluetooth connectivity? Advanced Bluetooth connectivity includes wideband speech. Now, this means you have super high quality phone calls with much better speech intelligibility. And it also includes high quality streaming audio from your computer or mobile device. Now, this also means it supports output for connecting wireless speakers or headphones for audio playback. Can you tell us more about the MIDI capabilities? Now, the Rodecaster Pro 2 can be integrated with other software via MIDI in a number of different ways. This includes the smart pads, which can be used to send MIDI commands to your DAW or your streaming software. Now, it could be used in this way to trigger a drum machine, it could be used to control a fader, or it could be used to switch scenes with an OBS. The faders and the knobs can also be mapped to parameters in a DAW, allowing it to be used almost like a control surface. And that about wraps it up. Hopefully we addressed everyone's questions. If you have any other ones, just drop them into the comments section below and we'll try our best to get to them. But until then, we'll speak to you later. Happy recording.